Hello everyone, I am Ajayur Islam from University of Texas at Arlington. Today we are going to discuss about the Atterberg limit test of fine grain soil. So for Atterberg limit, usually there are two limits, liquid limit and plastic limit. Except these two, there are also one another limit, uh, that, that one is shrinkage limit. So the presence of water in cohesive soil can significantly affect the engineering behavior of fine grain soil. So at defined water content, the state of soil varies. So let's say if there, uh, there is more water, the state of the soil will be liquid. If we decrease the water content, it will go to plastic and if we further decrease, it will go to semi-solid and then solid state. So the liquid limit is that water content at which the soil will start to behave as a liquid from the plastic state. And plastic limit is that water content that at which the soil would, would, would start behaving like plastic. And also the shrinkage limit is in between solid state and semi-solid state. So if we plot the decrease or increase in volume with defined water content then we'll get a graph like this. So with increasing water content the volume of a soil sample will increase and with the drying of water content that means with decreasing and the drying of soil the volume will decrease but at a certain time after a certain time further if we further decrease the water content, the volume will not change. It will remain constant. That specific water content is called the shrinkage limit. And at shrinkage limit, the soil will be at 100% saturation. That means the degree of saturation will be 100%. So to determine the liquid limit of a soil sample, we there are uh, various methods we will uh, follow the Cassagrande method. So in the picture you see the Cassagrande apparatus. So these are the procedures. So at first we need to take some soil samples and we need to pass that soil sample through number 4 to sieve. Then we'll mix the soil sample with water and we'll make a soil paste. We will we'll place that soil paste on the Cassagrande device. Make just we need to make sure that the depth of that soil paste will be around 8 millimeter. Then we have a specific grooving tool. You see, this is the grooving tool, and with the use with the help of that grooving tool, we will cut a groove like this. So the dimension of the grooving tool is fixed. So the groove we made it the dimension will also be the same. After that, we will start blowing the apparatus. That means we will start blow, uh, blowing the Cassagrande device. So while cutting the groove, the uh, soil paste will be divided into two. And when we start blowing the apparatus, uh, with that energy, it will uh, try to merge together. So we have to stop blowing when the two part of that sample merges around 0.5 inch or 12.5 millimeter. Okay. So at the time when it merges 0.5 inch, we will stop the blow. So we will count how many blows required to merge that 0.5 inch. Also, we need to determine the moisture content of that specific soil sample. So we need to take a moisture can, we will weigh the moisture can and then we take some sa samples from here, then we will take the moist moisture can and the wet soil sample, then we will place it in the oven for 24 hours. After that, we will again weigh the moisture can and the dry soil sample and with the help of those data we can easily determine the moisture content so for each trial we will have one moisture content and one number of blows if the number of blows 
is less than 15 or more than 35 then we need to repeat the experiment so let's start the sample calculation of liquid limit so we need to do the liquid limit test for five trials at different moisture content so let's say at first we will get the moisture content around 18 then we need to in uh, sorry we get the number of blows at 18 then we need to increase the number of blows that means we need to decrease the moisture content so with that soil paste we will add some dry soil and then mix it properly and then we will place in the cassegrain uh, and do the test again so if the moisture content is more then the required number of flow is less because with more moisture content the soil will more likely behave as a liquid that means with less energy it will merge together okay so we will get five number of blows and with that corresponding number of blows we will get five different moisture content values so we have five moisture content values and five number of blows if we plot them together in a graph actually in a similar graph we will get five scatter point so in that similar graph the y axis should be the water content and the x axis is the log scale and it should be the number of blows and then we need to fit those points with a straight line and that straight line is called the flow line so the liquid limit of that soil sample will be at corresponding 25 blows so we'll draw a vertical line corresponding 25 blows and from that straight line we will go to the left and that moisture content is the liquid limit of that sample and with the flow line if we determine the uh, slope of that flow line this is called the flow index with the help of flow index and plasticity index we can also determine the roughness index so what is the what is the significance of this flow line of the slope of the flow line so let's say we have two soil samples soil sample one is like curve one and soil sample two is like curve two so for the same difference in moisture level they have different number of blows that means if the curve is more flatter then the required number of blows to change that moisture is more so if the number of required blows is more that means it ne needs more energy to change that moisture content so number of blows for the flat curve increase very much indicating higher shear strength so the soils with same plasticity index may have defined shear strength so let's start the plastic limit test so plastic limit test is quite simple and we don't need a specific apparatus we just we can use the palm of our hand so we need to mix the soil with water again but this time the there will be less moisture content because for the liquid limit test the liquid limit is higher than the plastic limit so we'll add little bit of water with soil and then we'll try to roll the soil sample like this using the palm of the hand so if we can go into a thinner thread then the moisture of that soil sample will be high then we need to decrease the moisture content and again if we can't go to a thinner thread before it crumbles or it breaks into several pieces then we need to add moisture so actually the size of the thread should be 3.2 millimeter or 1 by 8 inch so the liquid limit the definition of the plastic limit will be we 
will be able to make a thread of 3.2 millimeter in diameter and at the same time the thread will begin to crumble so we have to give some trial and errors with this so the exact plastic limit is we will roll the soil sample till 3.2 millimeter diameter if the soil crumbles at 3.2 millimeter diameter then this is the exact plastic limit so then we'll we'll do this for three different trials and again we will determine the moisture content so the plastic limit will be the average of these three trials so if we know the plastic limit and if we know the liquid limit then we can determine the plasticity index plasticity index is nothing else just the difference between liquid limit and plastic limit and plasticity index is a very important parameter for our engineering purpose so high plastic Plasticity index soil that means high PI soil is actually bad for construction purpose and low PI soil is good. If the PI is high, then there will be much volume change when the water will go through it. That means if uh, there is any rainfall, then the uh, rainwater will infiltrate into the soil, and with that moisture content, the soil volume will fluctuate. That means uh, it can go to settlement or it can expand so high pi soil is bad for construction but if the pi of the soil is low then it's good actually and also the plasticity index depends on the presence of different minerals in the soil sample so high pi means there will be a high amount of monmoilonite and low pi means there will be a high amount of kaolinite so defined atrobic values for defined clay minerals are shown in this figure also we have another limit that is called the shrinkage limit so if we know the plastic limit and if we know the liquid limit we can determine the plasticity index and if we plot this in a chart this is called the plasticity chart let's say the point is a that means our corresponding liquid limit is around 63 and the corresponding plasticity index is around 17 so this is the point a which is our soil sample which actually represents our soil sample and we also have two lines these two, two lines are fixed u line and a line we will extend these two lines backward these two will intersect at point o then we will join point o and point a together which will intersect the x-axis at point b so the point b the water content at point b will be the shrinkage limit so this is an indirect method for determining the shrinkage limit there are some another uh, method for determining the shrinkage limit but we can use this empirical method so what is the engineering application of this test actually the main application is uh, to do the soil classification so this is the plasticity chart let's say we have a soil sample which we tested the atomic limits we found that the liquid limit of the soil sample is 60 and the plastic plastic limit of the soil sample is 40 then the plasticity index will be 60 minus 40 that means the plasticity index will be 20 so if we uh, come into this graph for 60 liquid limit and for 20 plastic limit here is the red dot so this chart actually divides into several regions which will tell you the classification of the soil so if our soil belongs to this point then the soil will be mh or oh mh sorry mh means the high plastic silt and oh means the high plastic organic soil if 
the liquid limit is above the A line, that means the soil is high plastic clay or high plastic organic soil. If the liquid limit is less than 50 and that point is below A line, then the soil is ML, that means low plastic seal. If the point is above A line and liquid limit is less than 50, then it is CL, that means low plastic clay. There are also another classification, this is called the dual classification. If the plasticity index varies from 4 to 7 and if the liquid limit varies from 5 to 25, that means in that region, if our soil sample is, this is called the CLML, that means in the uh, elaboration of this uh, classification is silty clay low plastic soil. So the atropic limits are usually correlated with some engineering properties like permeability, shear strength, compressibility and others. So if we know the atropic limits, we can predict the other soil parameters. So here are some additional video which will help to further understand the experiment and also the how to analyze the results. Thank you for all for listening to this video. Hope to see you in the next video.